just about 6.30, so I will call this, uh, this evening's meeting of the Select Board to order here in uh, Manchester-by-the-Sea. Uh, have a roll call vote on uh, who is here. Brian? I'm here. Kathy? Yes, I'm here. Becky? Yes. And John is here. And I think that's it. There'll just be four of us this evening. So that's good. Uh, first on the agenda are public comments on non-agenda items. Is there anyone online or uh, in the room who would like to make comments? Let me preface my comments here by saying this meeting is being recorded for, uh, well, I guess for minutes because I do not see Debbie here. <laughs> Debbie is not well tonight, so oh, she is. Now. All right, so that's a double, double, double reason for that. Okay, uh, chairman's report and action items. The chairman is away this evening. The action items that we have on the ever uh, rolling list, I think there are three that we will be addressing this evening, dealing with uh, parks and rec update, the Arts and Sound and budgets, and um, perhaps the compensation study, I guess that's uh, with you, Greg. Anything else that's going to be, should be added to this uh, action items list for the future and or for consideration this evening? There was something, but I can't remember, so I'll email it to Greg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just came back and I... As long as it's not tonight, there's no, plenty no. of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's... Uh, Actually, I do have something. Sir. Sure. Uh, uh, Pax and Rec has been approached a couple of different times, I think it's on social media as well, as far as the naming of the uh, Pine Street Fields. There is, at this point, no criteria for naming uh, the fields. As we are going forward, the potential of corporate sponsorships become more and more uh, available. I think, I don't know if we want to visit uh, some criteria for sponsorship of public properties, fields, <coughs> buildings, etc. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Yes. It feels like we should have some guidelines in general before we select names for any one thing. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I don't know historically how some of the other fields have been named. When was the last field that was named? It was Coach Field Field. That must have been a long time ago. Yeah. Well, otherwise, still known as. So there's nobody, nobody active today per se that. No, but there is. I mean, there has been some suggestions for Pine Street Field already. I'm, I'm and, aware. Yes. And Parks and Rec are reviewing it now, and then there were some other things uh, that came up on social media or other names. So there, so that's under con, uh, under consideration, and I think uh, that'll probably something happen in the next two meetings with them. Let's just put that on. All right, yeah, so, so we'll put that, we'll put that on the yeah, action items. Send it out a couple of months or whatever. To consider a, uh, a list of um, criteria mm -hmm. for, for the naming of the field. Okay. And I did, uh, I dropped by the field today, by the way. It is, it's getting used. Oh, yeah. It looks oh, like yeah. it's, <laughs> it looks like it's, it's wearing a little bit, especially in front of the two goalie uh, spots. Or down the dirt. Where all the action is anyway. Okay. Metro field. Yeah, well, a lot of, lot of rain. That's what's going to happen. Uh, anything else on the action items? Nay, nay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. First on the agenda that's running here are interviews. Uh, I think uh, Rebus is not. I think we're starting and ending with Michelle. Is that correct, uh, Greg? Is Michelle here? Or online, maybe? Online. <coughs> no. <laughs> Michelle Cooley. You see her? No, I do not. I'm sorry. Okay, so we can skip down. It's a little bit early, so we're going to skip way down. Let's go down to the consent agenda and cover those items at this point. 
We have uh, the minutes, I believe, just of September 5th. I don't just, just the 5th, yes. Because the 18th is not um, available yet. So um, that's on the list. Uh, the Vic Chiller license for Jamie's roast beef. Uh, the memorial benches, two of them, Tux Point, and the plaque on a, an existing bench here on the Tom Common. I'm not sure which one that is. An Eagle Scout Award. Any comments on the consent agenda with the exception of the September 18th minutes? Motion to approve consent agenda as posted minus the September 5th, 2023 minutes. Second. Okay, good. Any further discussion on those items? Roll call vote. Becky? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kathy? Yes. And John says yes. All right, we're done with the consent agenda, and we're still working on time here. Um, anything you want to touch on on the town administrator's report uh, at this yeah, point? Yeah, I, I can go over those items if you okay. like. That would be uh, fine. So, uh, update on some uh, construction work. The Walker Road water line replacement effort is getting underway. Um, that will be happening for... Uh, the, the rest of the year, most likely, through, uh, through the end of uh, December. Uh, there will be some isolated disruptions uh, to services and also occasional one-way traffic will be taking place. Uh, so notices are going out to homeowners and we'll be letting them know of, uh, of those details as they, as they progress. Uh, but Renice, uh, Renice will be doing the work, the contractor. It's replacing, replacing the old water line. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that's underway. Um, facility plan, the master plan, uh, in terms of up updating facilities. Um, you commented on an earlier draft. We'll have uh, another draft ready. I am assuming you want to take a look at that at your meeting on the 16th. Um, so we'll get that to you ahead of that meeting. And, um, and you can have any other comments that you find appropriate to, to wrap that up. Yeah, that, that engineering group will be here at that meeting? Yes. Yep. Yep. So again, we'll, we'll make sure to get that to you uh, before the meeting so you have time to read it, um, not just over the weekend. Um, update on our town planner search. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to, to bring our, our top candidate on board. Um, it's a tough hiring climate. and. Um, our, uh, our pay was not sufficient to lure them from another community. Um, so we will be um, uh, continuing to try to fill that position. Uh, we're looking at uh, interim, new interim hires. Uh, Betsy Ware, who's currently our interim planner, uh, her time will end with us uh, by the end of this week. Um, so we are uh, scrambling a little bit to try to make sure that there's not too much of a gap there. And we will continue to keep you appraised of how that is going. Do, you, do we know how far off we are? Well, for this one candidate, we were in the 15K range. Mm -hmm. how, does, yeah. how does that affect the continuity with regard to the NDTA uh, project? Well, so that's one of the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, we do hope to bring on um, the consultant within the next couple of weeks and we'll be brought on to help with that effort. So that will certainly help pick up the, the slack. The consultant has been identified and... We're waiting to hear back from um, a handful. To, so those are due the end of this week and then we hope to help make a selection by the end of next week. Mm -hmm. and, and then like I said, we're certainly working <coughs> to, to find a, an interim another interim as quickly as possible. Is, is the pool um, as small as many other pools for municipal hires? Yes. <laughs> that's, yes, that's, they are. that's Okay, yeah. thank you. Like I I said, so. uh, we, we have not had a flood of applications. So, um, so we will continue to uh, put on the payment. If you know of anyone, send them Send them my way, please. <laughs> Were there any other aspects to the job that um, 
might have a concern the, the applicant. Effect. <laughs> yes, because um, I, I I have heard. So I think um, it's it's no secret that we have a challenging environment right now, mm -hmm. um, and, and so that might give give potential applicants a pause. Right. Um, so we're hoping to certainly work through those and overcome those challenges. Thank you. Let's see if I can get this on the Zoom. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, uh, on a more upbeat note, um, a couple of things. One, uh, the um, conversations with the, uh, with the Masons in terms of a potential senior center, um, that's, that's progressing. And we hope to be able to uh, bring a, a final proposal forward um, uh, within the next uh, month or so. So we're, we're pleased to see that progress. Reporting in progress. Oh, here we go. Yes. And so the, the concept there would be to um, seek voter approval for the funds for the purchase, um, kind of minimizing the, uh, the structure. We would own a portion, and the Masons would continue to own a portion, and then to embark on a um, pretty aggressive fundraising campaign for the renovations and upgrades. So what is the um, proposed proportion? Percentage-wise? Percentage-wise. Um, it's roughly uh, two thirds and a third, so two thirds for the town. Yeah, in, in rough, yeah, rough numbers. Mm -hmm. And so, would you run it as a condominium, like you'd have a separate account escrow to? Um, yes. You know, have a for, reserve for account for capital expenses for capital and all that stuff. Okay. Thing. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that'd be a shared effort. Okay. Uh, both, with both entities. So have, have we experienced with that kind of an arrangement before here, or have you in your past? Um, no. No. No, and, no and no. No and no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not, it's not a usual arrangement. All right. um, there are other examples, certainly, um, but uh, it's, it's not unheard of. I, I think it would be good, to John's point, to look at the um, the condo docs for those other examples. Yes. Um, I'm a trustee at my condo, and, and right. I've, I've had experience with other ones as well. So I'd be happy to take a look as well, just to kind of. But I think you you want a real estate attorney who, and I'm not sure whether our normal town council would, you know, have that. Type. It's a real specific type yeah. of experience. Uh, yeah, it's a public private entity here, sort of. Thing. Yes. So I, okay. I, I don't no, know. It's, what it's, special, not, it's not your run of the mill. No, I don't yes. know what the special considerations are. But even when it's all private, condominium law is very specific, has some yeah. curves yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, love and nuances right. <laughs> that deserve uh, a little extra attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in terms of um, the community center and the building over at, at Harbor, Harbor Point, again, the discussions are ongoing. Hopeful that we can come to a resolution that accommodates um, all the parties. Um, nothing definitive yet, but we're hoping to. Uh, the discussions are continuing. We hope to bring that to a resolution in the next uh, next few weeks. Um, I did have someone reach out to me um, asking if we had this on the agenda for tonight, and I said no because it's not a town issue. It is between the Manchester Community Center building owners and the property owners. So um, I think it's really great that the town is trying to assist and facilitate. Um, have we put on the website though that it is, it's not the town? Because I know that the, uh, that the Manchester a social media site. There was a lot of incorrect information going around on that. I don't think we have put much on. No, it's. I mean, it doesn't. It's not our. No. Our uh, ball, but no. 
I don't know. Okay. So, so, so we haven't been public about any of this at this point, other than what we're saying right here. There hasn't been any other outlet. Well, at, at your the last meeting, we you, you talked, talked about it. You, you, you know, you gave a green light to yeah. try to um, negotiate a, a resolution that would um, potentially uh, be a win for the community center, win for the town, and, and the association would be comfortable with it. Um, so we're acting on that. We don't have any um, conclusive resolution, but I think it's it continues to move, and I hope to be a positive direction. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not on social media per se. I have not seen what the comments are. Becky says they're rather extensive. Huh? There, there's been a lot of back and forth, okay. but it's it's um, very little has been accurate. Okay. So I've, I've, I've met with the um, community center board a number of times. And, uh, we have good open dialogue and communication. So I think they, they are comfortable with knowing what we're trying to do to facilitate. Um, so I, I think it's probably the most important play okay. from, from that perspective. Okay, All right. Um, Anything else on, on administrative report or the community center per se? Okay, we're set with that. Is Michelle around yet? Do um, you see her? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Something must have come up. Uh, I don't want to get into the budget items at this point. Uh, liaison comments from anyone here? Um, if I may. You may. Um, I think everybody saw the letter from Harbor Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's um, they sent they sent um, an email or letter which they received back in April. Um, and forwarded it, forwarded it on to all of us. Um, and I then I CC'd Greg and Debbie on it, as well as Bion, who'd not been on the email which was sent to us. And just expressing some concerns. Um, but I had a concern with sort of how the letter read and that there seems to be some either confusion or misunderstanding regarding their charge or charges. And um, of course, we are working on government governance and trying to get all boards, committees, et cetera, clear on, OK, what is your mission statement? And what are you, as a group, charged with? Um, so I don't. I'm, I'm actually confused. I'm not, um, what email are you referring to? Could you just tell me what, because I've been away and I may, I'm sure I missed it. I just want to make sure I go back. Yeah. Uh, and while you're looking at that, the letter itself pretty much reflected, the gentleman who wrote the letter was uh, an applicant for the Harbor Advisory Committee. And it basically uh, reflected everything he discussed, what he, his view with what the harbor was going to be. He wanted to see the harbor. Right. So which has right. been discussed mm -hmm. and in previously and I don't think that we should be because it's not on the agenda we can't really no. be deliberating or discussing any of that however except to say that that much of that has already been discussed um, I'm looking so um, are you asking that the no, I'm just giving an update and make sure everybody has had a chance to look at the letter. I have not. So has has is there any lack of clarity though on the charter for that committee? Is that something I'm not gonna speak for them. I can okay. only say how I perceived the, the email and and it it um, seemed not necessarily in line with 
their function as an advisory group to the select board and the harbor master. And again, my impression to that was that the feeling was that the select board overshot their headlights. Is that a fair assessment? Um, I think it was more it was that we just outside. didn't take in them into consideration. I mean, this is not something that has been recently um, brought forward. I think some of it we've been talking about for quite some time. I'll, I'll just tell you. Yes, I think, Brian, that is a part it, of it. Mm -hmm. send it. I don't, I don't have it. Okay, and I'm trying to right. open well, it up. Well, okay. that'll be a topic of discussion. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just said that may be. Um, I'm just looking to see if it's on our action item list. Actually, is it on the agenda tonight? Well, it really is, is on the goal? agenda, right? The My agenda computer's the frozen. No, it's not on the agenda. Hmm. But that could be an item that should be on our action items, I would think. Yeah. Not too distant. Oh, that's future. what I. Thank you. <laughs> the action item I thought was missing was follow up. Not on the Harbor Advisory Committee, but the Harbor Master Plan. We re reinstituted it. Yes. But we didn't specify a date by when they were going to come back to us with some next steps or whatever. So I thought yeah. that should be added to the action item list. Thank you. That's okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, can get, we can get a, a date from that one. Yeah, we, we need right. to get updated there because they're re circling their wagons there, I guess, that are reorganizing themselves. They're going to be more formal. Yes. Um, so they will, but they, they're moving ahead with bringing on board the consultant from um, UMass Boston um, to help with, with crafting the, the management yes. plan. Okay, and I don't know where that all stands. They have to tell us. Yeah. So, okay. So we'll, we'll get an update from them. Uh, Mr. Gates has a comment. I put a comment on the uh, Harbor Management communication. I've been prowling through uh, after hearing about this letter. Excuse um, me, point of order? That we're, we're, are we? Yeah. Uh, we can take one comment. Point cause of, I came across the, in the Act of 1931, chapter something or other, that the town has an obligation to fill in the land here and in time as the harbor high tide mark rises, an obligation to fill in another foot above the high tide mark. And that may be something that harbor management should be looking into. It's an ongoing obligation in that of the inhabitants of the town of Manchester. And All right, that, that, that is a topic that perhaps you would take up with them well, a few weeks know, down the road. Your response, yeah. I think you mentioned that that's something they should have. Okay. To their lists. All right. It's in, it's in the minutes here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, just one quick yes. update. We're going to discuss parking at the next. Is it, did I see that on the potential agenda for next time? Oh, or is that on the on the action item list? Because um, parking discussion. Oh, so we're not going to discuss parking again until February. Is that the? Mm -hmm. That was the, okay. Okay. With the exception of the Beach Street issue. Well, that's what I'm qu questioning. So I took the action from the last meeting to bring the Beach Street question to both bike and ped and um, downtown improvement, the kiosk, all that stuff. That um, we already got the feedback from bike and ped, which I sent to you the last time. Uh, downtown improvement. Um, they do want. They suggested that we consult with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Downtown Improvement Committee was very, um, you know, they seemed to be amenable to some of the suggestions for the um, Harbor Street crosswalk. And also, um, we didn't get to discuss Chief Fitzgerald's thoughts on um, kiosks last time. Um, so they were, um, you know, open to that. However, they thought that the business community might have a different perspective. So. Um, we should make a point. I don't know when the next Chamber of Commerce meeting um, is in Manchester. I was kind of expecting it to be this month, but um, I didn't see anything. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, it was due this month, but um, haven't heard anything from Erica. So just when we meet with them again, this would be something we should 
sure. asked Todd to bring up. Yep. Um, that was it. Good. Um, all right. It's certainly now time for um, the, the pickleball uh, update. I'd like to uh, preface, I see Cheryl is here, so uh, we're set to go, I'm assuming. I'd just like to preface all of the comments that will occur here, that this is a meeting where we will be uh, collecting information and getting an update on exactly where this pickleball situation stands. We're not anticipating making any decisions this evening. Um, the whole situation really has several different challenges. Uh, one, we seem to be in the forefront if not number one in terms of trying to moving around, trying to solve uh, this problem. And we're number one in the country, it appears. I assume that those who have an interest in this topic have perhaps Googled it a little bit. And there isn't anyone that has found a, a solution and said, okay, this is what we did and this is what has worked or hasn't worked. They're all searching around. So we're at the, at the very front of trying to address this problem. Um, second, I'd say technology seems to be moving fairly quickly. So whatever we look at now is not necessarily going to be a reasonable solution in, say, three months or four months or six months or whatever, because things are changing, because there is a demand to find solutions to the sound problem. And I think, finally, we've got to spend our money wisely here. We have, I don't know, nineteen or $20,000, and the opportunity for constantly figuring out, hey, does this work? No, let's try something else. Uh, it, it would probably be a, a challenge to... Uh, raise more monies, there's no guarantee that will happen. So we have to make sure that what we do makes sense and will work for us in the intermediate to long term. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Cheryl Marshall, Head of our Parks and Rec. Thank you. I need to introduce myself now. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, when I was last before the board in July, I reported that USA Pickleball was coming out. Um, they were going to run some tests and use us as a test site for some of the sound mitigation materials um, that they're testing. After a busy, very busy summer, um, they were scheduled to come out in August. They didn't get here till um, September. So Carl Schmitz from USA Pickleball, he's Managing Director, Equipment Standards and Facilities Development, came out here himself um, on Monday, September 25th. Unfortunately, I was on vacation that day, but uh, luckily Carl was able to do everything he wanted to do with the help of our pickleball representative, Jeff Sones. Thank you, Jeff. He was extremely helpful to Carl, um, as he has been to me, so thank you. I know you're going to be mad at me for that, but thank you. Um, uh, so um, Carl is different from the USA Pickleball ambassador I had at our last meeting, Joe Lyman. Joe was a volunteer for USA Pickleball who also worked for a company that sells sound mitigation material. Carl, on the other hand, um, who should be here, I can't tell him yet, but um, he'll be here tonight on, um, through Zoom. He works full-time for USA Pickleball um, and is in the forefront of their latest endeavor. Um, Carl has been busy traveling the country for USA Pickleball in their initiative to reduce the sport's sound output during recreational play. USA Pickleball is currently working on a quiet category to recognize products that reduce acoustic output without negatively impacting the game. They're investing in research and creation of equipment and solutions to enable more communities to enjoy the sport, which is exactly in line with what uh, we, as the Park and Rec Committee, are trying to do. Um, since he has been on the road and going from location to location, he has not had time to submit a written report to me yet or review the data and get that to me. So um, instead, he said he would be able to come here tonight and give some highlights. So instead of me giving you an update from him being here, he's going to give you the update himself. So when someone has control of the Zoom over there. Greg does. Excellent. Um, so this will be also the first time that I'm hearing it, but um, I'll let him talk and then I'll add in a hand if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, I'm online. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to the leadership here in uh, uh, at Manchester. Um, I was able to spend uh, both Sunday and Monday at the site uh, here this last weekend uh, to take readings and observe the, the overall acoustic soundscape at the area. Um, the uh, by the way, uh, you know, I'm not 
indicting uh, the, the report previously done, um, but uh, I have some additional data. I'm still going through it. Um, as uh, Cheryl indicated, I'm on the road and not back in my, uh, my office yet to process the data, but I can give you some initial findings. Um, the, the, the courts lie at a confluence of, exist, uh, you know, of an existing soundscape uh, consisting of significant and measurably steady acoustic emissions. State Route 127, uh, the MBTA at uh, up to 26 times per day in a park that already hosts baseball, uh, soccer, and basketball, um, you know, they significantly contribute to the, uh, the overall acoustic uh, uh, input in that area. Um, given the weather conditions and schedule, of course, uh, these were not in use at the time I was there. Um, one of the things I, I wanted to bring up is that the, the, the type of equipment uh, that's used in, in parks uh, nationally, uh, in m most cases, has been sourced from big box and online, um, online stores, and they're close to 90 decibels and 1200 hertz. Uh, the trend has been uh, through material uh, progress and man manufacturing process improvements uh, to closer to uh, 1,000 hertz and 85 decibels. Um, so we, we've seen an improvement over time in that case. Um, so, so that's a, an important point to, to, um, uh, to take in, into uh, account. Um, more recently, uh, manufacturers have been able to reach even lower thresholds uh, closer to 80 decibels and 600 hertz, which we tested at the site there uh, this weekend. And I'll, I'll have a, a summary report on that uh, here uh, shortly. Um, the, the net of, of what I wanted to share with you is that there's three directions that you could take here. One is hold fast on the fact that this is a, a recreation zone park. Uh, with an existing acoustic condition. Uh, the traffic uh, from 127, the train uh, 26 uh, plus times a day, um, and uh, overall uh, you know, the, the uh, output from the uh, uh, park in general uh, means that it's, it's a high, uh, it's got a high acoustic uh, footprint. Second piece is that you could mitigate partially or completely with a sound barrier that meets budget and performance criteria. Uh, we tested several of those and, and left a couple of them in place uh, for Cheryl to, uh, to uh, evaluate here over the next few weeks uh, from one of the manufacturers. And the last, of course, is to mandate equipment that drives the acoustic emissions below uh, what, what uh, um, you would consider, you know, um, an acceptable or an unacceptable level. So there's a few processes that we can help support here going forward um, that um, uh, we would, you know, USA Pickleball would uh, put some uh, support on. I'll take a beat there. Oh. In case anybody wants to comment, you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Carl. Um, so I've seen the product that's down there. It's um, Acoustic Fence is the company. So they have on, on <clears throat> facing the course on the right hand side, they have the, the more of the reflective type um, barrier. And then on the other side, they have more of the absorbing barrier. It is a prototype on the far end. So it's a, a print of um, like leaves and whatnot, which I think would be wonderful on the street side. And then it, it's solid black on the other side, which, so like I said, it's a prototype, so they're just starting to work on it. Who's Defense is the company that had done some um, projects for other towns that didn't, um, in my opinion, and some fact, didn't go so well because it was just reflecting the sound and people weren't totally happy with it. So now they're working on the absorbing. So that's part of what like John was saying, um, the technology that's advancing. Um, I have been talking to the Acoustic Defense Company as well as the Hush Tech, which is 
guy who was here before, and the DDS Acoustical. All three of those companies have a transparent, which is a, um, part of something that the neighbors would like to see, um, not a black wall. Mm -hmm. If you have gone by, it's nice to see that something's happening, but um, that was just for an example. Um, and it's, it's, it, if it were to go the length of the fence, it looks like a black wall. So, um, you know, plans to work with those companies to see have a couple of options. Um, some have shown to be half and half, you know, half solid, half um, transparent. Some have said a couple panels of solid and then a couple panels of transparent. So we do still have a little ways to go with it. Um, Carl, how much of a difference did you see between the two products? Uh, I think the uh, acoustic block uh, products, the ones uh, that remain in place right now are probably uh, the best solution. Uh, they're tested, we've got the numbers on them, and, uh, and of course, uh, they're, you know, they're already in place and you can uh, evaluate the impact um, as, you know, as they're already there. Um, they're, you know, from a, a pricing standpoint, um, I, I believe they're within budget. I, I haven't seen your numbers, but uh, I think uh, they, will, they will do the trick. The uh, silencer, SLN uh, stroke CR products are new to the market. Um, we're expecting some numbers back on the <clears throat> on the uh, lab tests for those as well. Uh, they're lighter and could be uh, placed seasonally. Uh, by that I mean you could put them in place uh, during the course of the summer and then take them down uh, during the heavy weather uh, months as well. Uh, and that would preserve the, the life cycle of the products. And so this is a, a moving target. You know, there, there's a new new information coming every day. Um, we'll provide that to you, uh, Cheryl, as well. And so, uh, just let us know, you know, how we can support this uh, this process. Thank you. Any questions or comments from anybody else? Brian, anything? No, this one. I think it's uh, we can almost do. I mean, I think we're doing what we need to do. We're trying to find the right solution. We haven't found it yet, and that's all you can do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this product, Carl, this product is not installed anywhere else at this point in time. This is like new, new, new. Uh, the, uh, the, the product that's left in place uh, has been installed in probably hundreds of uh, locations. This is from Acousta Fence or Acousta Block. Um, they're uh, located in, in Tampa, Florida, and they've been in business for quite some time. The new product, uh, Silencer, SLN Stroke CR, is a new to market. It's a new technology using nanofibers. Um, it's so the short answer is no, it's not, uh, it's not been installed anywhere yet. Um, we're still evaluating the product. Um, uh, you know, we're looking for uh, test sites uh, that would, would be interested in uh, in hosting installations of the product. Okay, are we on that list? Oh yeah, <laughs> De <laughs> definitely. Okay, so that that particular the latest technology, and uh, I, I mean, you have some laboratory data that that performs perhaps better than the existing technology that you've got installed in several locations. Not you, but the company has. Uh, is, is, a, is a bit more dampening? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. That, that's correct. Uh, the attenuation is different. Uh, it, uh, it dials down the frequency as opposed to the sound pressure, which is different. And so uh, we're, uh, we're working with the uh, supplier and also with the testing entity uh, to uh, get a better grip on the output. And uh, we, we'd love to find a couple of locations that are willing to work with us. Is this something that will provide a solution that gets us below whatever the sound level is we have to get, or is it just going to provide a delta difference in terms of whatever the sound level currently is? 
It's a former. Um, uh, okay. From our perspective, uh, we need to you know, we need to address the perception, right? Which includes the frequency, not just the sound pressure, but the frequency. And I believe this product, as I described it, may do so. Actually, John, I, remember, I do have a question um, for Cheryl. Um, refresh my memory. The courts are they enclosed with a fence that we? Um, lock to prevent off hours use or is off boards today? So they're fenced in yeah. um, and we were locking them, unlocking and locking them, and then we got cameras from the um, police installed the camera. Okay. Um, so since the camera has been there, we haven't been locking all the time, but knowing that the police can check it. Because okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> part of the information that I saw indicated that, you know, it may be more than just residents who are using the courts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I guess as part of our thought process here, um, it may not be something we can implement this year, but you know, for next year or something, would we entertain only allowing residents, you know, to use the courts, which may mm -hmm. reduce the usage a bit, and therefore also contribute to some type of sound reduction for the neighborhood. I mean, the residents paid for it, so. Um, right, that is always a possibility, um, but it's not really what we do in our parks and open areas, not, right. I don't think as a park and rec professional and what my committee thinks is not something that they want to do. And then to be able to monitor it, we really, any areas we've made resident only, like the beach or whatever, you can really only monitor it through the parking so then that would be, you have to have a residence ticket when you're So that's why I asked if it was um, a, a locked gate, because, you know, to get into some of the marinas, you have a little fob, you, you get in, it's automatic, no one has to quote unquote monitor. So, but, you know, a resident, if they wanted access to the pickleball courts, would have to, you know, pay for the fob. So there's, there's, there's other models, I, I think, it, depending on how long it's going to take, to find a technical solution that will mitigate the sound. I'm just trying to think yeah. of, are there other things we can do that, you know, aren't costly and don't take a lot of calories to implement to reduce the amount of sound? And and I that's one that kind of came to mind that would not require, you know, people standing there asking for a driver's license. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we have already found the use to be going really way down. Mm -hmm. I would expect that. Um, so I don't know if there's more courts being built, but kind of the initial year of them being new, mm -hmm. um, I think we've kind of peaked with use. Um, it's still getting plenty of use, but the camera's great because I can also monitor, you know, how many, how many courts are being used at certain times of day. Um, and it does tend to be busier times than other times, and Sunday mornings tend to be a busy time. Um, but, you know, the nighttime use has dropped off a lot. Daylight right earlier as well, but the whole month of September, I mean, we've had nine days with no use because it's been raining, you know, um, but overall, just throughout the day and everything, the use has dropped a lot. As I'd expect, and like I said, I'm not suggesting we do something right this second, but if we come back and figure out that it takes, it's going to take us another year or something to mm -hmm. implement some sort of soundproofing, I, I think we need to be open to other options. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just trying to spitball here a little bit <laughs> and see if we can, if there's other things we can do. Can you yes, thank you. Um, I, I, th I think that nature will help out very shortly with the amount of use uh, that we'll be seeing out there. Um, I don't want to minimize the two people who have concerns because they do have concerns and they are very real. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to point out that we've had a lot of people in favor, including a Butters. Um, so I, I'm, I'm concerned about, we will never make everybody happy, but do we put a huge amount of resources into a town meeting voted and supported public 
area. I mean, it's, it's, it's a public park. It's been a public park for a long time. It was fallow for a little bit. Um, and in the beginning, when we had the skate park, there was a big hullabaloo about that, and then it went away, and as did the use eventually. Um, I just, I, I think that just because two people are louder and more persistent does not make their desires more important than anybody else's. I just, I just, board talks first, Will. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to put that out there as, again, because we have discussed this a lot. Uh, question, Cheryl. Have you looked at the camera data and tracked it at all in terms of use over the past, I don't know, two months? How long have the cameras been up there? Um, I think it's about six weeks. That we've Just been six there. weeks. Yeah. I did go back through the whole month of September. I was mm -hmm. able to check. Um, okay. So, and, I, and Jeff's down there a lot. So I have the data from the cameras, and I, I also have Jeff who's there and can see it, that um, they're still getting plenty of use, but they're not getting used like they were in the beginning, you know, or in the summer, or, you know, it is, it is yeah, leveling I, off a little bit. I think it would be helpful to kind of keep track on that. Yeah. I'm not, we're not looking mm -hmm. for every minute or anything, but it right. would be good to know how many hours it might be in use or not in use, um, and how that is trending. Yeah. Becky said, of course, yeah, winter's coming here, and daylight savings time goes away when, I don't know, a month? No, a few weeks. I mean, I mean, a couple here, weeks. Quarter past seven, it's pretty dark out there now. Yeah. Um, to that end, your sign has 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I guess it has to say something about sunset? Um, it, the sign actually says 8 p.m. now because um, when the well, police was, were in charge of checking it, they needed kind of a hard time because... Yes, Some understood. people were saying something at 6.31, others were saying 6.35, so we made the hard stop at 8 p.m., but nobody down the plane in the dark. There is a sign that says no headlamps, um, so I would say from the cameras in the last month, no one's been down there after 6.30. People playing the game with headlamps? Yeah. I mean, is that why that sign is there? at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to picture that. That's all. Uh, yeah. One individual. One person. Also, sounds like the name. Was it me? 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 Okay. All right. Well, it, it would be useful to know how that is trending. As Becky had said, yeah, I think things tend to trend. I do not think this is going like uh, skateboard and other thing. I think it's. It's going to stick around. It's going to stick around. It's, it's cutting across all of the all of the strata of. You know, I don't care whether you're 30 years old or 80 years old. Carl has the Everybody. stand up. So. Right. You yes, stand Carl. Up. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, just a comment. Uh, I appreciate the uh, attention to uh, detail that uh, uh, you know this township has paid to this. There's a opportunity to address uh, the local uh, players and uh, those that want to you know, to uh, participate in the sport, but, you know, also I, I, I do appreciate, you know, the fact that uh, there may be an impact to a couple of local um, residents uh, to this. So we're uh, doing everything we can uh, to uh, approach this from a equipment standpoint, testing standpoint, and uh, uh, planning uh, perspective as well. Uh, to make sure that you know, there there aren't these issues in the future. So anything we can do to support. Uh, Cheryl's been uh, very proactive in this uh, case. And so, you know, anything we can do to, you know, to make sure that this uh, doesn't, uh, you know, propose a problem in the future, uh, it would be good. So anyway, uh, uh, thanks for the chance to uh, present to the group here and, uh, Cheryl, anything you need, uh, let us know. Thank you. Do, do we have a sense of timing? Yes. So if, if we become a pilot, pilot site, is that something that happens this fall, or is it something that happens next spring? 
Okay. No, it's still there. Okay. Carl, that's for you. Carl, are you still there? Is a question to me? Yeah. You know, ask, asking about timing. If, if, if we want to go forward with the test site, a pilot site, how, how quickly could that happen? Or is it a fall project or is it a spring project, basically? It's, uh, it's right now. I mean, uh, if, if you like what you saw, uh, you know, from any one of the suppliers, from um, the uh, silencer or, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the other candidates for this, um, we, we can move uh, very fairly quickly. I have a question. Carl, Carl when, is, when is your report going to be available? Uh, could you repeat, please? When will your report be available to us? Uh, through the next week. I'm uh, traveling from Atlanta to uh, Vegas uh, here as we speak, um, and I'll, I'll try to uh, create the report here as I travel. John, thank you. Yes, Becky. Um, I did have one other question that I thought we might get to later, but right now, are there any um, um, components in the product or products that we need to address in terms of proximity to water of the sound mitigating? Good question. Are you uh, referring to a brickyard pond? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's a uh, definitely a reflector. Um, and uh, it, it has nothing to do with the pickleball, but it has a lot to do with the trains. Um, and so I'm still working on the model. Um, and by that, I mean uh, the, uh, you know, there's a 3D uh, simulation that I'm working on uh, that uh, looks at emissions from the train, from the roads, from 127, et cetera. I mean, so short answer is uh, working on it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some feedback here within the next uh, seven days or so. I'm, I think I wasn't clear. I'm sorry, Carl. Are there any toxic? Any environmental concerns in a resource area? Thank you. Much better <laughs> said. You get that, Carl? I did. Um, I'm. You may not know. <laughs> I'm processing. Yeah, uh, okay. a toxic. To toxic is a. Uh, mm -hmm. it is a different word. Um, uh, from my perspective, um, you know, our sport does not uh, contribute to that. Um, the frequency and, and uh, impact of, of you know some of the, the the other contributors to the soundscape in that area need to be evaluated. Um, I'm not a audiologist, uh, so you know, I, I can't tell you, uh, you know, uh, an opinion on that. Um, I'll stop there. That's okay. I think the question is more for the manufacturers anyways, because it's yes. more yeah. about yeah. the product. You know, um, is it going to lose exactly. it? Um, or, you know. So I'll save that for the uh, manufacturers, so make sure it's on the list of questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so Cheryl, where where are you on kind of a, a decision path here? Is this, given what you have seen with technology out there, this is where we're at. And if we if things make sense based upon Carl's report, and you're thinking this would be a recommendation. So I'm thinking that once I have the report back and the talked to the companies involved. Um, so if we are a test site and it's free, then that might be kind of easy, because then we'll pick that one, because the price would be right. But um, mm -hmm. if we have to, in fact, you know, to the company, have to put it out to bid and do that, but we're planning on having probably an neighborhood meeting in November, because there will still be options. Colors, print, transparent, how many transparent, how many solid. Um, so. Once we have all kind of all that, all those ducks in a row, then have a public meeting to allow the neighbors to um, have some input there because some are concerned that it'll be a black wall. 
So all these decisions, I mean, given the timing here, this is not going to happen before the courts close for the season, I don't think. It's not going to make so. sense. Unless, like I said, we get some free deal through through USA Pickleball, and it fills up quick. Um, I still would like to include the neighbors. We promised that when yeah. we made some options, we would include them, just to make sure that okay. whatever it is. But the courts close on December within two months. And first month of the first week of December, correct? Yes. Okay. So the timing okay. for all of that would be... Then you've got another few months where... Right. And if we're taking them down seasonally, I'm not sure if it's so Which you do. To take them down a month later, well, we haven't yet, but we do recommend it, so I don't know if we would put, them up, put it up and then take it down a month later. Where would these things get stored? This is not a small volume amount of stuff. Oh, it is? The only place I was thinking is, luckily, the dates do not coincide with the beach at all, oh. so possibly in the bathhouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your backyard? Yeah. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of, I saw someone's hand, but, and are you taking I public will, comments? Uh, we will take some brief public comments, so long as they're less than two minutes for sure. But uh, do we have any anything else here on the board at this point? So we have a feel for the time frame. And I would like, um, kind of following with the camera, through the end of the year to get a handle on whatever date, data you think are appropriate to kind of collect that. Right. Yeah. And, uh, daily and basis. We'll do that for September. Yes. The, uh, I'm, I'm reluctant at this point, as long as we're just late to the season, to rush into anything as far as, uh, you know, if we can get uh, some programs from uh, USA Pickleball. But, uh, uh, we've got, what, let's say two months, less than a month. The okay. challenge I think that we have here is they'll, if they're looking for pilot locations, well, that's going to be a bit pilot time location time. in Florida is a lot easier to set up than yeah. in mm -hmm. December than here. And Kathy wants to go on a field trip. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't think I would preclude. A, a, a pilot in the next two months if, if, they're willing, if, it, yeah, if we can if scramble to do it. I think that's yeah. worth doing. But yeah. um, but I agree that I don't know if we want to make a big purchase right this second. Yeah. Pilot, if that number is right, yes, we'll do whatever we have to do to yeah. make things happen so we have the information. Otherwise, mm. we're sitting fallow for a few months and the whole game could change with other products which might be more effective. And then where are we? You know, you show up in February and, hey, here's the latest, greatest. Right, signed up. So, there yes, that's right. One, with the pilot program, or, or will we have, uh, will we be obligated to a specific amount of time to keep it up? Or are they, would they be putting up um, sound mitigation temporarily? The pilot program. I think we haven't really got that far yet. Yeah, those yeah, are the details. Those, those, those yeah. details. We'll have to see what they want, and I'm, this is what we can do. I'm still here. I'm still here. Excellent. Carl. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else from the, Anything else from the board? But he wanted to make one more comment. Yes, Carl, please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, whatever you need. Uh, we will leave the uh, test samples in place uh, to provide uh, data. Uh, we will bring in additional, if you need, uh, to help uh, with this process. And so uh, the commitment to Cheryl was, uh, you know, let's look at this site as a test site for different solutions. Uh, we will uh, come out with the uh, output uh, share that with uh, you as well as the uh, open market and uh, make sure that you know this type of situation uh, is addressed uh, as early as possible so you know uh, wh whatever you need uh, we, we can uh, support okay thank you thank you we look forward to your uh, report in the next uh, week or so that's for sure any other questions, comments from the board? 
I'll just echo what Greg said. <clears throat> if there's a pilot that we can do this fall, it's learning. And if it doesn't cost us anything, let's just go do yep. it. Yes. Okay. And just be clear on what we want to learn before we do the pilot. So give them the exit criteria for the pilot. What do we need to learn? Then if the information tells us one thing, you know, we go in one direction. If it tells us something else, we go in a different direction. But let's just get some data. Otherwise, we're just wasting, a, a, you know, six or eight months. Time's just going by. Okay. All right. Questions from people? Uh, yes, please. Um, Name and address. Marina Gates, uh, 31 School, to the one. I don't live near the area where my thing takes place. But I, will, I have a question. I have some knowledge about it. <laughs> Is the ball, uh, the racket made out of wood? The racket? So, no, there are some cheap ones that are made out of wood, but most are made out of oh, graphite. Because the times they were, yeah, wood. And so the ball is made out of what? It's like a wiffle ball, a plastic a ball with a lot of holes. So the sound actually comes from hitting it. Am I right? Both from hitting it and it hitting the ground. Right. Uh, in Europe, they used to have this game for a very long time in, with other materials. And I have to tell you, it doesn't matter where you live, if you're in a higher ground, you hear it all the way up. So I'm very empathizing with the people who live nearby. Not all sites are appropriate for every sport that we play. I know that field was used for a lot of different other things, but they didn't have the constant pop, pop, pop that you hear with this game. And uh, I think maybe after all the areas we have in town, we don't have to have a space that is right next to neighbors to play that game. And instead of having all these barriers and all the other things right on the road, why can't we just find a site that is not near people? Instead of trying to create barriers and times and so on. In the summertime, most of the time, this game is played here. We have snow and ice and all Okay, time. all right. So I, I understand. And we're, we're looking, constantly looking at solutions here. And there's no ideal solution. Um, right now, we're working on the soundproofing. But all of those things are still being investigated, are still possible. But this is the most efficient uh, approach that we've got, at, at least at this point. So. So thank you. Any uh, questions, other comments? Yes, please. Yes. Um, Name and address. Kim Lowe, 142 Summer Street, um, just about 100 feet away from the courts. Um, I would like to say it's just not two people that have an issue with the sound. There are 17 people within the four houses that have brought up concerns about it. And I'm concerned that the, the report that was paid for by the town suggested that the fencing should be at least 12 feet, and I believe it's only 10, and that those sound panels are not going to correct someone whose home is two or three stories high. It's just going to, I hear it every day. Yes, I hear the train. Yes, I hear the children playing over there at Sweeney. It's not the same as the pop, pop, pop for hours at a time. It's, there should have been some type of impact study done before it was placed where it is. I think maybe I called the conservation committee because I don't think that would have been allowed if it had not been an existing um, skateboard park or tennis court. That there's a possibility that you could flip two pieces of conservation land for another. It's a process. You have to apply to do that that maybe there's another piece of conservation land that could house the pickleball courts that are not near a home, which would make more sense and alleviate all of the, the panels and, you know, what has been labeled as disgruntled neighbors. But we're not against anybody having fun. It's just listening to that constant sound. And there are gaps during the day when it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, if I came in here today and started using the F word, I would be asked to leave. That's what we hear for portions of the day across the street. And I don't think it's something that we should have to listen to as neighbors, in addition to the sound. OK, well, well, thank you for your comments, Kim. And I know that uh, Cheryl certainly is, is working on some of those concerns. Oh, I've been told that that happens at recreation facilities. I don't go to a baseball game or a hockey mm -hmm. game every day that I should have to listen to that. Thank you. Uh, comments online there um, from anyone? Uh, okay. 
All right, good. All right, thank you. So I think we're we're set. We know how things are going to. Well, we don't know, but at least there's a game plan as to how things will play out over the next couple of weeks. Yes, one I more comment. Say, may I have a quick comment? Yes, Dr. name Brian. and address. Uh, Kay Bryan, School Street. Yes. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I am a, a, a recipient of the, the joy that happens on um, the courts. Um, I, would, I went the first day that it was opened by Parks and Recs. I was the only person who came for the, you know, the, the Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and they, what do you, do you call him, the, the pickleball rep here? He you know, took me under his wing. The program has grown from me to about 40 people. It's, the sounds are, are very happy, very joyous, joyous. Haven't heard a lot of um, negative. And I just, I, you know, it hasn't been reflected here. And it's a wonderful thing. And you all should be very proud of what you've done. I know these, these problems will always exist, but thank you for what you've done, all of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment. Yes. Jeff, Jeff Solomon, Lincoln Ash. You asked about the court usage, and pretty much from 8 to 11, you could have four to six courts being used. I'd say from 11 to 4, you might have one to three being used. And then from 4 to 7 or till dark, it depends on the time of the, year, uh, the summer, um, you could have another three or four courts being used. So it's not six courts, eight hours a day from eight to eight, or 12 hours a day, excuse me, um, that, that the courts are being used. Okay. So well, I've, I've been by it two or three right. times in the past week, but all in that 12 to two area, nobody at any of those times. But I understand the morning is a more... And it's hard to predict even Thanks. like Saturday, there, I think there was one court being used from eight to 11. Yeah. So Yesterday they were all being used from 8 to 11, every one of them. Well, the camera data, we would like that. Yeah. All right, so be sure to uh, collect that. Good. And I have spent time there. I, oh, yeah. I go by frequently. I have gone over across the street and parked, and I've listened. So I've, I have gone by quite a bit, and um, I have witnessed it being both very busy and not busy at all. So it's, it's sporadic. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, it's, I'm sp I've stopped spending the beach now, spending the year at the ball courts. And <laughs> there were times when there was no one off. I mean, you know, I mean, I've got some along it now. Mm -hmm. The camera's going to be helpful for all of that to confirm what's going on. Good. Just one oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Hi, Marianne, 5 Ocean Street, Marianne Coons. Um, just one thing to also realize, not only are they working on sound mitigation, they're also working on ball and paddle for sound mitigation with the ball and paddle. So who knows, six months from now, there might be a, just might be a new conversation. Okay. So just to put it out there, that's all. We're hopeful. All of that stuff, <laughs> all of that stuff will yeah. help. Yes. And also, you know, I used to play on that court back in the 70s with my parents tennis. playing tennis. So <laughs> I've been playing there a long time. Yeah. <laughs> with the lights on, right. <laughs> Sarah Pierce. Yes, hi, thank you so much. Sarah Pierce, 9 Friend Street. I missed the beginning of the meeting, so I apologize if you covered this, but what is the... Um, actual noise mitigation policy or what you would apply to noise in certain time frames for this? It, 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 the minutes will be available. Like the noise uh, ordinance, uh, rather. Yeah. Sorry. I, I think that ground might have been covered in an earlier meeting um, in terms okay. of noise ordinances or things like that. But I don't think we have one. Well, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't. we don't. We don't have, we don't have, have one. one. There isn't it. No. Oh, okay. I was just like wondering if people had, is it personal or because this is a community space or how does that work? I'm not quite understanding I understand that. that. Well, there's an ordinance, I think, in town that you're allowed to have noise up to a certain point at night, which well, I believe is 10 o'clock. We do not. And so does this a, I, I don't what? think there's any, any there's noise no ordinance noise. that we has been... No. Place oh, all. we don't have that? No. We have a construction noise ordinance. 
and then you have a gender okay. nuisance bylaw. Well, those are the so two regulatory no pieces we have. As far as when you can make noise privately or during a party or anything like that, I just no. no. For, for construction, you probably do. You can't start construction at like five o'clock in the morning. Correct. But, okay. But All right. Great. Good. Thank you. Just yeah. checking in. I'm sorry if I missed that part. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. Can you say something about uh, her? Uh, that's it's okay. I think we've already we've already got it. Well, but it sounds for the accordion. In Europe, they have it because they have siesta, but here we don't okay. have siesta. All right. Okay. We've got to move on. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. And, and thank you, Carl. Nice thank you. Thank you. Uh, rental application. 26 R School Street, and well, we'll take them one at a time here. That's the first one. Greg, right, what so, do we got here? So 26 R is is uh, is a property that you formally you know, issued a license. Um, they they, they uh, forgot to renew, and so we have them before you now for the renewal of the license. What well, the licenses are annual. They're calendar. annual. They're calendar year annual licenses. So in January 2023, they did not. Correct. They should. They should have re up. Yes. So is this retroactive, or is this for two thousand? So this is really to the end of the year. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. And then it'll get renewed again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Questions from the board on that? I just um, this was because. Debbie went online, right? We found this out not because the person said, oh, let me bring this forward. It was Donna, Donna, yeah. Donna, Put on you. Thank you. It's, it was probably the tweet that I sent you, so I saw this. So Debbie earned her keypad, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, Debbie found this online, per se. Right, they didn't realize it was an annual license. Okay, yeah. They, well, but they have renewed for a couple of times. I mean, I saw the excerpt, which was from 2019. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't, they did I earlier. No, they, they had an they initial. Did apply initially. I don't know if they had ever applied for a renewal. That was a one, that was... Is that proactive on each individual's that they have to be proactive on that. This doesn't is not an automatic renewal where we send them some information. Right. I mean, perhaps that's what we need to do. I think that would be I a would good think idea. That would have there, to be, we don't have that many. Really. I don't know how many of these short-term rentals we have we, in town. We have a handful. <laughs> I think that needs to be part of the so we can, we can do that. upper ronde yeah. so that they've got... Uh, that's a good idea because I think most people just simply... Yeah, they, they yeah. You yes. wouldn't think about it. It's, not the, it's just an inadvertent oversight, I would think. Imagine. Okay. All right. Uh, do we need to do anything about that formally? Do we have to vote on that then? As uh, yeah, yeah, we need okay, to vote. Okay, fine. Before. All right. I will entertain a motion. Wait a minute. I will. Um, I I know, but I took Brian's other one away, so he can take this one. I want this. I will practice on the other one. Okay. All right, chill. Let's not fight over. I this. move that the select board approve the short term guest license for 26R School Street. Okay. Further discussion? Ready to vote? Becky? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kathy? Yes. John says yes. Okay. That is set. 150 Pine Street. That's a new one. That's correct. Huh? So we didn't have the application before you, and a, a, uh, a sketch of the property. Yeah. Uh, we do have the um, inspections done by the fire and, and uh, the board of health. Okay. Any discussion on 150 Pine Street? I just have a general question. Is this considered an... ADU, Greg, or not technically? No, it's not technically an ADU. Okay. 
And I had a question. Looking at the layout, it, it, it provides two guest parking spaces, um, and then it shows a parking spot that would back onto Pine, or, or it says parking, that would back onto Pine Street. Um, is, is there another house where these, I mean, where's the main, main building and so sure. what does that one parking space go to? Because I think if, if that is additional parking for um, the unit, um, it should not be used. If they back, if they have to back out onto pine. So that that that's an existing parking area that the that the homeowners are using. So it's existing, so that already right. that's a moot point. Okay. I'm 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 looking at 150 Pine and seeing where that space is, and really it's like a space that's a, a parking space parallel to the road on the side of the road. It's not drawn that way there, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, it is more yeah. parallel. Yes. Yes. So they they are not to, to your point. They are not backing out into traffic on this. They are just pulling out. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Further questions? Are you on the hot seat? I'm on the hot seat. I move that the select board approve the short-term guest license for 150 Piney Street. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. No, this is a, this is internal here, Mr. Gates. But you didn't ask for it before. It's not. It's a, it's a, there, it's not a public hearing per se. Okay. So, uh, ready to vote, Mr. Solacy. Yes. Ms. Malata. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Round says yes. Okay. The budget. Mm -hmm. So again, as we um, gear up for developing the FY25 budget, which starts next July, um, you know, that feels a long way off, but we'll be here before we know it. Um, looking again for, for guidance that you may have, you know, particularly I, I you know, provided you the various goals that you had identified last fall. Um, and. It's really time for us to revisit those and, and create a new set. But um, if you had thoughts on how the budget should should be reflecting and advancing um, the goals that you've identified, or some new goals that you are anxious to to see implemented, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing your input on on how the budget should uh, best reflect some of your goals and, and priorities. Okay. Any comments? Yes. If I may. Ms. Jakes. Always and ever. Um, one, one, um, I, everything that you listed, I thought is, it, it, it was very thorough. Um, I wonder, though, if the town has an appetite for increasing um, the police department in that. If we want the police out um, walking the beat, which I, I think is something we ought to get back to, we just don't have the, um, the, the police officers on call to do that, um, as well as more traffic enforcement. Is that something that we should look at? I, mean, I think it's a conversation that you should have with the chief. I'll be in for his quarterly review next next meeting. Right. Um, I think he might say that with the additional staffing that was budgeted for this current year, they're, they're, they're just getting fully ramped up for that now. And I think I think he would say that that will allow them to do some of that additional um, walking business area and, and also traffic. Because we've added control. two positions essentially over the last couple of years, yes. right? So we we correct. So um, so I think 
to you. So I think it's a conversation that is worth having, and, and okay. I think we should have him assess a response based on the, the additional staffing that has been given this year. And I only ask because we've had a lot of conversations over the last several years that pertain to... Right, so um, a specific might be a, a second uh, parking enforcement, dedicated parking mm -hmm. enforcement officer. But relevant to that, this disability issue, is that's still there, but it's going to fade in the next year or so? I'm sorry, the... The, 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 dis the, the disability issue of the uh, police officer who's on disability. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes, that, uh, I mean, I mean, that's money that we get back eventually. Yes, yes it is. And and what's the what's the time line for that? So we have a, I believe it's another year from February. Okay, so it's not that far away. So we're getting close. <laughs> I think the other thing too, Chief Fitzgerald mentioned though that one of the reasons he was looking at the parking kiosks is that could be a revenue generator to help hire someone so it wouldn't have to come from taxation, right. it could be right. enforcement. Correct. Correct. Um, the other thing though too is before, you know, just a general comment, before we hire any other people in town hall, I, I think there's a goal that we haven't really probably spent enough time on and that's looking at how we're delivering our services and whether or not we can do them differently. Um, and some of the finance meetings I've, you know, I guess heard thoughts around possibly adding to, adding some positions uh, for what I would consider an administrative task. And for me, that is a huge red flag. Um, we should be really looking for anything that's administrative, it can usually be automated. So I'm concerned about adding permanent employees for what could be a temporary type situation um, if we do need purely administrative help, I would encourage us to use contract labor, you know, short term, something like that. But um, there's, I, I think we had a goal that we, we probably haven't spent enough energy around, you know, trying to better understand how we can do some of our administrative tasks more efficiently. Um, and then with respect to the law enforcement issue, you know, we understand there's a state law that won't allow us to do certain things in an automated way using cameras. Laws can be changed. The only laws that can't be changed are the laws of physics. So according to the, um, it was either, I think it was bike and ped committee meeting, someone had identified a, um, a lawmaker in a different part of the state who was interested in changing that law. Let's put some energy around that. It's. The hiring of bodies to do administrative tasks is really not something I'm enthusiastic about. Um, it's there's so many other ways to solve those problems. So that would be my general comment. Uh, to that point of action, if we're going to on as far as public safety, I think that because uh, we have met with the youth fire union uh, last spring, I think we've talked about a different position. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some of our resources as opposed to expanding. Uh, uh, if we have a finite amount of money, we'd rather spend it towards uh, Harbor, uh, two deputy positions. Again, that solves one of the issues or at least addresses one of the issues of secession. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, it, that's where I'd like to see. And then uh, we can look at, because I think right now Chief Fitzgerald's doing a great job with his community policing. And I think if we can skate a year or two uh, and to talk to him, I don't want to cut him off at the knees, but I think that we do have, we did, I don't know if it was a commitment we made to the uh, fire. We just said we would look at it. And, and I, I, I think, think the other thing, too, to remember is we, we do have a new chief since mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. conversations That's, happened. He's and doing he's job, doing a way. great job. Yeah. And he's also starting to invigorate a potential <laughs> list of call firefighters. That is, that is part of the staffing picture. So I think we need to give our new chief um, some time to figure out how, you know, some new call firefighters could figure into that staffing profile and whether or not you, you flip a position to be a captain or a deputy rather than adding one. So it's called, you know, it's like a, um, uh, I think a staff it's mix. Requirements. You know? It is different requirements, but from a budget standpoint, you, you flip the position. 
you you um, you're right. A different person would have to to um, it's called um, you know it's it's a it, you're changing the mix. You, so I, I think we need to give you know Chief McNeely some time well, to figure right. out how that would all play in before we definitely say I need another body. Yeah. But also to that point, we know that uh, the harbor master. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. so the harbor I'm master is different. Gonna, I was I just talking know, fire department. You know, yeah. So yeah. there's if we've got a finite amount of money, let's right. determine where we're going to spend it in public safety. Right. I agree. I agree. I did want to jump on, if I may, yes. with, to a, with just a different take on what you were saying regarding um, more administrative. Um, Town Hall has gotten a lot busier in some ways because of um, quick access via emails or, or people, even people just walking in. There's a lot more um, activity. And I think one of the things that people like is that they can walk into town. I'm not saying that there aren't areas for automation. I'm not saying that. But I do think that in terms of, of uh, some of the needed needs are actually going to be real people. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so automation, when done well, it frees up people mm -hmm. to talk to other people. But what I witness is right. too many people shuffling paper that they probably don't want to do anyway. They would probably appreciate someone handling you know, some of the back office tasks being done differently so they are free to talk to the residents who come in through the door. That's what a successful um, you know, automation environment would look like. Um, it's not to take the place and put robots in front of people or yeah. anything like yeah. that. No, you I know that's, that. that's not what it's about. Uh, Greg, I, I have a question. Obviously, you've spoken with your various direct reports, and this is kind of a culmination. Your recommendation with regard to the positions are largely emanating from that and your discussions with them and where they feel something needs to be right, done, that, that, as, well as, as well as your observations. Um, all of these, are any of these positions, and I'm not going to discuss necessarily the merits of whether that, that's needed or not, but can they be like, uh, you know, part-time positions? Or is or contract or contract? I'm just saying to go and say we're a department of two, and now we need three. That's a fifty percent increase. Right. right. In have you got fifty percent more work? I mean, how are you managing to survive the past couple of weeks? It doesn't jump to fifty percent at once. It's not right. Or or what's driving the work? So, for example, one of the things that was discussed at FinCom was the records requests. Right. There's been oh, yeah. an increase, which is a valid increase in work. Okay. Well, if we do need an additional person to handle some of that, what's a revenue stream that could be used to fund that? Right. We are allowed to charge for that. Are we? I don't think so. No, we, we uh -huh. can. Are we charging the maximum? You can only, you can only charge okay. 25 an hour. Okay. So, but you can charge that, right? And we should and yeah. do. That's good. Yeah. But that's a perfect example of something that I, if we do need a human to handle it right now, that is, I really don't understand why we couldn't do a contract position. I just, I just, I, I think we just have to make sure we, we right size the solution to the problem, okay? And think carefully about whether something is a temporary issue or a permanent issue. Um, and, and then we, we look for ways to automate the heck out of it. <laughs> well, and also if they're legal right. aspects, right. such as someone makes a, um, a document's request, yep. what is the time frame in which that needs to be delivered? So they're always... Right. And that, to that point, though, sometimes in our effort to deliver something quickly, we uh -huh. overachieve, and that drives up cost. So we, um, And so expectation. Cost and expectation. So right-sizing things means setting expectations and then meeting those expectations not necessarily overachieving on everything, which can drive up, um, which can drive up cost. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. there's an alignment there. So, so again, back to my question: Are all of these because yeah, you use full time in several different descriptions, and I'm just wondering if uh, part time or seasonal 
or to the extent that they're contracted, you can get, if, if there's something that needs to be done, it doesn't have to be done, jumped in, all of a sudden you've got somebody for 52 weeks. Right, I think. Uh, uh, or is it impractical in some of these positions? I don't know. That's, sometimes that's a challenge. Oh, but I, I understand. You know, trying, to, trying to find a uh, But that makes it, a, 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 you know, to, to, to jump a whole person is a hard decision, I think, for this board. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It really yep. is. Yep. That's why I wanted to flag That's these early. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, that's my observation. As, as Becky had also mentioned in going through this list, I, I think we're doing pretty good. Most of that stuff is the underway. Goals. It's in progress. Most of it was not, hey, it's a project, we're going to do it in a year, and then we walk away. No, I mean, it's, it has to evolve over a period of time. And uh, most of those things on that list are in progress. I mean, a couple, which is, uh, you know, the school system operational deficit, that's a whole separate meeting, discussion, separate everything. That's a, a, big, a big challenge, and that is underway, but um, that's the thing. And the other thing I guess we have not really kicked off in a formal way is um, our uh, Increasing our engagement, improving and mm -hmm. engagement to the community. We have not formalized something. We've been talking about it. Right. Yeah, you've done. Right. You've done your various. And that's sort of moved table, it along. But table that's, that's, that's got to get moved along a little more quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would. I would say something's got to happen with this, and I think something is. I mean, we had a discussion on that two, two meetings ago. I think. Don't we have a um, a five o'clock? Next month, I mean, our next meeting, yes. we're meeting so an hour we're doing, beforehand. Yes. All right, we're starting, we're starting open, with you're doing right. an open forum, basically. Okay, that's fine. Okay, what's your next meeting? But yes, so it needs to be more formal. And the only other th thing I had is that this, um, you know, our, um, I guess just uh, that the capital budget, the big ticket items. Needs to be, I think. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, we, I remember the um, FinCom, we were doing the capital planning differently this year, right? Everything up front. And I remember Sarah saying, even before that, that she wanted um, specific, uh, to set a deadline for the, any committees who might want to make a request. Has that, I didn't hear that deadline being set yet. Do you have any inkling of when that? When she wants the input from the committees. So, so I, I assume that that would come with the rest of the budget. So in December. December? Right. right. Okay. So, so those um, those requests will go out in another week or so. So will they those requests go out to the committees as well or just yes. to the department heads? Both. They will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Other questions, comments on the budget additions or things to add? What's the timeline for the Finance Committee in coming up with its first task? So we'll have um, on the October 25th, we started on capital. Okay. Um, I should have got that date. Um, they would like to hold a joint meeting with you on capital at the end of November. And I'm sorry, I don't have that. Let me see if I can figure it out. Yeah, I think they were looking at the 29th of November as a possible joint meeting on capital. It's a Wednesday. So the week, the week after Thanksgiving. This is November 29th, you said? 29th, yes. Okay, so Wednesday night. So if that, that might work for folks. But Would it be uh, 7 or? I know they, their meetings usually start at 7. Yeah, probably at 7. Yes. And mm -hmm. then um, most likely I would be presenting the preliminary budget to both you and the Finance Committee in a and they would join you at your December 18th meeting, most likely. Okay. Is that, 
capital. Okay, we're doing capital and expense separately this year. So when you say well, we'll do a first round of capital. Yeah. It's sort of as a okay, we'll, we'll a draft, right? A draft. Yeah. Um, and I'll include that as part of the overall preliminary budget presentation in December. Okay, so the first look at the capital will be in December. 29th, right? November, It'll be in November. November. I'm sorry, November 29th. 29th. Yes. That'll yeah. be the first. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So then, I'm sorry, Greg, I just got confused because when I asked when we were sending out the request to the committees, I thought I heard December, but if we're going to meet on capital in November. The, 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 the department heads are reaching out to the appropriate committees now for capital. Well, that's what I'm asking because I'm not sure every committee is being reached out to. So I wanted to make sure. Check that. Okay, so people should have received a request from a department head now. Yes. And by when would and those yes, by when would those um, requests be needed in order for us to review the capital on November 29th? <laughs> so the, I, I need those by the um, by the twentieth of October at the latest. Twentieth of October, okay. Because I have to have a presentation to the finance committee on the twenty fifth. Twentieth, okay. I don't believe every committee has received such a request, so. Um, I'll remind department heads to reach out to. Right. So I, I'm liaison to Bike and Pet and Downtown Improvement. I will mm -hmm. send a note to those folks. Who should they send their to Chuck? Chuck should okay for those two committees. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other comments on money. Um, uh, there are some chats going on that, um, that? speak to not understanding the process and not asking about the process prior to making judgmental and inaccurate comments. Um, so uh, they are, people in the chats are saying, making comments as to what the town ought to be hiring, as well as a comment regarding transparency um, and silencing the public. Um, we have discussed before the function of the select board and how the select board operates. What we're doing right now is discussing things. And yes, it is in a public forum and evidently transparent because of that. But it is a select board decision or discussion rather right now. It is not public comment. No, but it is a public discussion. People Absolutely. are listening and can hear everything that's going on. That's why everything is done publicly. So, Sorry, I'm just a little tired okay. of the same. I'll bring my computer next time so they can. Garbage. OK. All right. Garbage? Uh, other, other, other questions on uh, or comments on the budget and the budget process here? that uh, Greg needs information on from us. OK. I don't know if we're going to take additional public comment. So if yours has your hand up. Up to you, Tim. Um, yes, I'll take the comment. Who's that? Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Sarah? Hi, yes, it's Sarah Pierce, Nine Friends Street. I'm so sorry, Becky, that you believe what the comp the public is saying is garbage. It is not. Sarah, it do is not conflate what I say. Do not change my comment. I'm not changing your comment. I'm responding to my chat that you put on public record in a meeting. Okay? 
This is a small town and many residents are having a lot of issues wrapping their heads around all of the changes. And it might seem okay to the select board because there's very few of you and I truly respect you and I wanted to say hats off to all of the chiefs, fire and police, but there are so many questions to be answered and there really are no public forums. I am not trying to drag the select board down. I'm just trying to get a congruent message out to the public from you and I don't know what that is. Sarah, if I may, it's still very early in the process here. And as but there's so many processes, John, and it's just yep. so important that when people from the public ask a question, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm simply trying to get an answer. We are faced with a 40A MBTA project, a 40B project, a huge project coming into Manchester, and we're still not dealing with affordable housing. I think that it's very concerning to the public, like what's actually happening to our small town for those of us who actually have lived here for 40 plus years, well, it's well, concerning. There are, there are meetings that are held every week, almost every night on one or more of those topics. And, and how many you, people you, attend those meetings? You're free, you're, you're free to, apparently you try to try, try to attend as many as you can, and I laud you for I that. do. I have to, because I have absolutely. to stay on top of it. If I don't, I wouldn't know what was you happening. You involved. You're living our life. We do, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm living it. It's kind of it's hard right. and for us to keep up with all I don't like it being people. called garbage, oh. though, because I don't think it's garbage. And I think I that was a misstep I, by I, Becky I don't think that so Becky she meant should apologize it. for that. Becky did not mean it in that sense. Okay. So... Okay, but I appreciate your, your interest in constantly wanting to be updated on things. No, I do. I just I truly want to preserve Manchester and its character and the small town feel. And we were talking about police presence and the new fire chief, McNeely, who hats off to him, hats off to Chief Fitzgerald. They've done an amazing job with the resources okay. they have. I appreciate it. I love it. But there are so many questions that that so many residents have, and they don't have time to sit in on these meetings. They're long, they're painful. You guys can all attest to that. I mean, right? Well, to, be, to get involved and be informed, you have to make the time. You really do. You have to make the time. And I appreciate that get, you guys make the time. It's, it's not gonna get spoon fed to people, but I appreciate nope. uh, I appreciate your comments and your interest, and I hope, you're, I hope you attend all of the meetings. I really do. So, okay. Thank you. Question Thank from, you. Um, Greg, question. We're our extended meeting that's in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Have we started to publicize that yet? We'll have to check with Tiffany. I'm not sure if that's So been... I'm wondering if that could be helpful, right? We've yeah. said we're going to meet in two weeks, but if unless someone has actually attended this meeting or read the minutes mm -hmm. already, so maybe we could take well, an action to a little we'll earlier we'll we'll communication. Okay. And, and maybe a select board, um, uh, you know, uh, you, we have the conversations, you know, a list of the upcoming conversations. And so to give people kind of a roadmap, hey, we're going to talk about this on October 16th, we're going to talk about this, you know, just a one pager flashed out on the website. I don't know. We're I'm just not trying to... talking. We're okay. asking questions. No, I, these, I understand. We cannot be deliberating. Yeah. I understand. That has and I... to be made clear. Right. But... I just, I, I can kind of resonate with the concept mm -hmm. that a lot of what we do is individual, one meeting at a time, and we're not necessarily communicating the, the pic big picture. And I'm, I don't know, Tiffany could probably be very creative with this, mm -hmm. but just to let residents know, hey, you know what? Yeah. Before the end of the year, we plan to talk to you about these things. Um, well, I mean, to, I that, to that point, that, that, that goes to the to-do to list here that mm -hmm. uh, he had provided with regard to improve and increase engagement. And I agree okay. on the on the home page, there should be a little box and say, this is what's going on for the next, I don't know, two weeks, three or, weeks, or, and just I, have a rolling... Honestly, if you're scroll. working every day, I think a month. <laughs> All right, <laughs> or, a month. You know, or... I, yes, I think it should be more... Or a quarter, or whatever. Well, yeah. that, I, I, mean, I, I agree. So, I mean, that, that has to come yeah. out of that initiative. That initiative. The, uh, it does. Yes. Yeah. So many movements. So many movements. But we know what the hot button issues are. Okay. But to that point, we know what the hot button issues right. are. 
Yeah. We don't know what someone else might think right. those right. buttons right. are. Right. Right. Okay. I mean, if you watch social media, two weeks ago, the hottest thing in town was a community center. It's there's no conversation on social right. media about right. that right. anymore. Right. There's going to be another hot button. Okay. But that's why we have the open sessions. I right? agree. Okay, but to to yeah. try to address on a on a weekly basis every issue, oh, yeah. it's it's no, impossible. You can't. And no, they, no, and they do change. That, no my only said, point, yeah, is there are so many different committees who are charged right. with taking care of all these moving right. parts. Yeah, uh, well, not together. taking care of them, providing information, oh, but working right. on so, addressing these moving parts. Right, and uh, it would take. Uh, there's volumes of what's going on. In the 20 years I've been on and off involved in town government, um, it has always been difficult to find the most effective way to get information out. And you, you simply can't. You can send hard copies, you put it in, the, you do the tide, you have you put it out there as much and as hard as you possibly can and think you've got everything co covered, and there are still many people who don't, for whatever reason, don't have an understanding of what's going on. Maybe you have two full-time working parents who don't you know, have time and um, yes, we have the Zoom. Yes, we have minutes online. Yes, we have the cricket and you know, the, the tide and other ways of getting information out. Everybody just has finite capacity. That's my point. That's a, yeah, I mean, I think we've got lots of avenues. You know, newspaper, mm -hmm. we've got the website, well, we've got meetings, we've got, we've got lots of different things. And the challenge is, is there are so many different issues and it's not like every single media no, medium right. has every single thing updated right. Right. as to what's going on today, and that's the problem. And Everybody uses a different piece of the media, right. and that may or may not be updated with, this is what the hottest thing is. And right so now. we try to get the information out. That in itself is transparency, and the fact that there are still people who, again, for whatever reason, aren't able to get the information and okay. anyway, that's right. tough. Anything else? To do. I do have one question yep. and it is regarding the um, um, the Eagle Scout. Um, yes, that was a, a consent agenda item. It was consent agenda. Be nice but, to have one of you attend. Yeah, and that, I, I didn't I, see the letter. It came in July. Yeah. At least it's yeah, dated it's, July. This, what is this? this is uh, Sunday, October 15th. Sunday in, August, uh, in October. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying the initial letter was dated July 13th. Well, we all each go so, to and But on Sunday, I will not be able to it's attend. Sunday? It's October 15th. October, I, I, so, I will be there. Good. Okay, just so long as someone is there. These are really great to do. They're a lot of the Eagle Scout ceremony. They're a lot of fun. October 15th. Okay, because yeah, we, we each got an email. On that. Yes, we did. Yes, we okay. got some yeah. sort of an email. Okay. I'll try to get yeah. there. Uh, we have a proclamation that we fill out for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You have to sign. Oh, is that one? Okay. Is that yeah. what we've got to do? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. No, the, I, the license is I have put that in my um, it's the fourth, fourth in my schedule. So I will do that. Um, along those lines, I need to do a survey here. The um, Boston Cane Award can be any afternoon over the next week or so, when, what afternoon, say between two and four, and it can be any of those times, two or three or four, are most, most folks available. Uh, they can make uh, Gordon McDougall, who is 100 years old, yeah. the recipient. And the award, I think, will happen at the museum, which is where the cane is kept. Oh, right out in front here. Right out in front here, yeah, so. I can only do Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays. Those are my only options. And Thursday the 12th, I'm pretty darn booked. I can do, um. <laughs> what I do with my pen. I took it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thursday the 12th. I, four o'clock is the earliest I can get here. So okay, well I mean that's that's an okay time. Thank you. We, we could do four 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 p.m. I can do Mondays or Thursdays. That works. Right, I, Thursday. Otherwise I'm working. So can't do that. 
Thursday, Friday. I mean, we can shoot for Thursday. This Thursday. Uh, or next Thursday. Either one. No, I'm just thinking. I could do this Thursday. I can do this. Uh, what time? Four? Four. I could do four. At the uh, museum? Yep. At the museum. We need to make sure that Mr. McDougal can yeah. do that. Yep. Right? I suppose when you're 100 years old, the sooner the better is always well, important. Right? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if that's where you're going. No, right? I was going with, is he, he available have, that He may have an appointment. <laughs> he may. But they, they said, they, said they, they were pretty flexible. Excellent. Gordon. So what's, the, what's that date? Two, three, it's four. That's the fifth. fifth. Uh, I will email you so October 15th. Okay. Thursday, 4 p.m. Yeah, the historical museum. The historical museum. Okay. Excellent. So we don't need to keep the cane, it just gets to say it. Well, I think that's in part why the museum wants it there because. <laughs> Yeah. It's been it, that they are the keeper, and if you go someplace and they hold it, they've had to become part of someone's estate. Uh, yeah, they've had, they've had to go, <laughs> go and get it back, and that's really kind of crude. So, yeah. so they've uh, decided yeah. this is a, a good good arrangement. That's fine. I think it is. There it is. Yes, I have to sign it. Um, anything else? Oh, Mr. Gates, I'll 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 recognize you. Thank you. <laughs> Last time, a, what I call a bull in the china shop subject was uh, discreetly avoided in terms of the school budget and the $17 million, more or less, for salaries that was not a place to look for cutting their budget. On the longer term, I question tying teacher salaries entirely to passing licensure examinations or courses mm -hmm. for salary increments. Mm -hmm. I really doubt that the Department of Education could swear on a stack of Bibles that there was the word of God that every course offered at every level of licensure is going to make a better quality of teaching individual or a very competent or more competent individual in a particular subject or both. And uh, in fact, there may be some courses that offer nothing to anybody. And uh, that we should perhaps in the long term get away from the licenses requirements as the basis for salary. And well, this is uh, this is social. probably something that you should obviously be speaking to the school committee about, and that's a very well, big that's a very big problem. It's coming up and it's being reviewed with the school committee, yeah. both boards of selectmen, uh, both finance committees, and somewhere some such idea should be started talking about on a long term yeah. basis, which possibly could give space to look to some of the re relative reduction in costs okay. of money in the school. Uh, sure. Thank you. Well, the school committee is probably aware of those issues. It's probably been brought up to them in the past. I'm sure it has. Well, somebody's so, got okay. to leave them. Yes. All right. Anything else tonight? All good. A motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Mr. Solisty? Yes. I don't think there's any more discussion on that. No. <laughs> Ms. Bellotta? Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Ms. Brown? Is, yes. This is record. This is uh, 8 30, two hours. Way to go. Good job, John. Uh, I think you should do this. I think, I think you should uh, do this full time job, John. <laughs>